a very warm welcome to Josh Gondelman. I'm a Jewish person. I grew up in Massachusetts around all Irish and Italian Catholics, which is why I look like this, but I'm drinking this. And I love Massachusetts. It's an amazing place. The last time I voted there, uh, before I moved to New York City, I got to vote in favor of medical marijuana and assisted suicide. It was incredible. Yeah, the ballot was like the track listing to Black Sabbath's greatest hits. And it was the best. And I don't live there now. And I always get nervous to go back for the holidays. And it's not because I don't like my family, I love them, they're wonderful, even the old people are great. <laughs> it's terrific, like, a lot of people give, I love old people in general. I love that they wear long pants and long sleeves all year round. <laughs> like their skin can't touch the air because they're made of avocado. <laughs> a lot of people say old folks are racist, I don't think that's true, I think they just think they're still whispering. But, <laughs> My grandmother, uh, the oldest person in my family at the time, uh, passed away last year between Thanksgiving and Hanukkah, so that might have to do with my immediate fear. I mean, she was 97 years old, which is amazing. The Roman numeral for her age was an entire sentence. <laughs> but that's so I love my family. My parents are wonderful and like beautiful people, uh, but they just we communicate weirdly. Like we communicate like uh, Jews steeped in Massachusetts Catholicism. <laughs> That's what happened. Like, I'm Jewish, as I mentioned, just with my facial features. <laughs> <laughs> but I was the last one in my class to learn that Santa Claus wasn't real because my parents didn't want to tell me and have me ruin it for the other kids. <laughs> I asked them if Santa Claus was real because I'd never seen him or evidence of him, right? They wouldn't let me leave cookies out because they'd go stale. My parents know how that works, right? They don't want to waste juice. And, <laughs> and then they just told me, they said, they told me this, which was very diplomatic, but sent me a weird message. They said, Santa Claus is real. He just doesn't come to the homes of Jewish kids, which is a very reasonable explanation, except it gave little five-year-old me the impression that Santa Claus was just like an anti-Semitic dick. <laughs> he just was like, no, screw these Jews, I'm not coming to their homes at all. So that's the kind of people, they're just so nice, but sometimes it hampers communication. My mom is kind of a blurter of nice things, but like the wrong ones. Like, whenever I bring a girlfriend to meet them, my mom will, without fail, announce that she has Googled them. Oh, yeah. Which is a totally fine thing to do, but a horrible thing to say out loud. It's like picking your nose. You can't announce it. That's what the problem is. And you can't let anyone see you do it. So, I, my dad is just kind of like a, um, like a very straightforward person who's super funny, but when it comes to serious matters, he kind of says exactly as much as he thinks you need to know. Like my sex talk was, we were driving somewhere, he was driving, I was 12, we were co-piloting, where <laughs> he's driving, and he says, uh, Josh, just one, he turns the radio down, so I knew something big was coming, he turned the radio down, he said, Josh, do you ever think about girls? And I said, yeah. And he turned the radio back up and that was it. <laughs> His sex talk was just covertly finding out whether I was going to tell him I was gay. <laughs> which I, I'm not, and I, that's, which is why I didn't tell him that. <laughs> so, my, uh, so that's, that's my father. He, even to this day, is a little strange. Uh, like, he texts weird. He texts, which is a big step for a dad. But he texts weird, like he signs all his text messages at the bottom, Dad. <laughs> Some of you are laughing, if you're not, you might be a dad who's about to learn something. And, uh, you're a dad, you don't need to sign your text message at the end, Dad, because it starts at the top, Dad. <laughs> so when I text him, always, they're from him, always sound like they're from the world's most paternal, angsty, 14-year-old boy. Like they all say things like, your mother and I got tickets to see Phil Collins, Dad. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what happens now, my dad is in his 60s, and he's been working in construction for 40 plus years, which is not usual for Jews. <laughs> and it, it's, and it's not usual for construction. Most of the guys that he started out with are long retired or moved down to Florida, and his body is breaking down in unexpected ways, and almost unprecedented ways. So the real reason that I'm afraid to go home for the holidays is because every time I do, my father has a different medical ailment that I've never even heard of before. And it's very stressful. The first one, I came back from college, and my, parent, my father will sit us down at like a, not like Thanksgiving dinner, but like, you know, my sister and I will be home the night before, and he'll sit us down at a small family dinner and say, um, it's always like a similar speech. It'll be like, you know how I've been having pain in the knees? I thought it was gout. It's not gout. I went to the doctor, they thought it was sarcoidosis, which that's never good. That's what they think it is on house before it's something way worse than sarcoidosis. Every episode of house. He said it's not sarcoidosis. But they don't know what it is. That's where they left it. They don't know what it is. But the good news is it's very treatable. I just have to take these hormone pills. I not hormone pills, excuse me, steroid pills. And they aren't like the home run steroids, they're just the regular ones that help your body work. So that was good, right? But it was stressful to hear. The next year I came back, my, uh, it was the night before Thanksgiving, we're having family dinner, my dad says, I got something to tell you. I was like, oh no. He said, um, I've had a growth behind my eye. It's been stable for the last 20 years. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I didn't know about this growth that's as old as I am. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure I brought it up. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> so the growth behind my eye has been sealed for 20 years. At my uh, yearly ophthalmologist appointment this year, they told me that it had started to grow. So they're going to do it. The good news is, it's treatable. All they have to do is put a small metal ring in my eye called a tantalum ring, and then they are going to shoot negatively charged particles, or positively charged particles, into my eye through the tantalum ring. It's called proton beam therapy. Very effective. <laughs> and I was nervous because that sounded like how they destroyed the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> but it worked, and so I'm less nervous. Um, and then the next year I came back, my father, uh, he, has, he said that he's a nerve, he said I have nerve damage in my arms. It's getting bad, which I knew. My father uh, doesn't have full range of motion in his arm or his fingers. So in our family, when you approve of something to support my dad, you don't give a thumbs up, you give a thumbs out. Because <laughs> that's as far as it goes. We don't want to rub it in his face like this. So we, he said the nerve damage has gotten bad. <coughs> Uh, I don't know if it's fully recoverable. The good news is it's treatable. All I have to do is go in three days a month, every three months to the hospital, where they'll give me an IV full of immunoglobin directly into my veins for three hours, three days every three months. And uh, that scared me because that's like the rumor of what they do just to keep Keith Richards alive. <laughs> I didn't like that. And he's been doing it, and I don't know if it's working. Uh, and that like really makes me, like, it makes me feel very uneasy and unstable just about the decay and, of life and aging and my own aging and his. And I'm terrified for what could be wrong this year, like I'm worried he's just going to sit us down and be like, well, I have space cancer. <laughs> Very rare, you normally only get it in space. <laughs> the good news is it's highly treatable. They just rub moon rocks all over my body 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And I don't want to hear that, you know? But I guess it could be worse. He could text it to me. <laughs> Josh? Got space cancer. Dad. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. It's a real pleasure.